Hey guys, it's Christine. This is our second week of elementary art. I hope you guys are doing well. Um, so last week I had a request for the Easter Beagle. Some of my kids that are in this class had signed up for the spring session. And as you all know, everything kind of went crazy in the spring. And this was something that they were looking forward to doing, but it got canceled. So it's a little out of season, but I thought that I would go ahead and honor it. And maybe it would just be something fun that we could do. Okay. Now, if you just feel really silly doing an Easter Beagle in September, I get that. So if you want to modify it a little bit, I'm okay with that. What you could do is um, leave off the bunny ears and maybe instead of Easter eggs, you could put in pumpkins or gourds or something that's more fall related. Um, that might be a way that you could modify it if you wanted it to be more fall instead of Easter and spring. But um, anyway, this is what we're gonna do and let's get started. Hey guys, so the first thing that we're going to do for our Easter Beagle is we are going to draw guidelines. Let's see, I'm going to draw a line that goes straight. Here, let me do it this way. A line that goes straight up and down with our pencil. Okay, and then another one that goes straight left to right in the middle of our page. Okay, we're going to start out by sketching our image with pencil and then we're going to go back in and outline it with ink and use some markers and we're also going to use our chalk pastels. So those are all the supplies that you're going to need for this assignment, okay? But we're going to start with these guidelines. Now to do his face, we're going to start out by making a circle up in this part right here. It's gonna be about where my hand is, okay? So we're gonna make a circle. I want you to draw real lightly because a lot of this is gonna get erased later. This is just to help us place our objects. And if you notice, I'm not drawing in one big quick circle. I'm doing kind of a lot of little strokes so that I can get the right shape. Okay, so there's one circle. And now I'm gonna do a little bit of a bigger circle. I'm gonna overlap just a little bit. And this one's gonna go down just about to that line that we made. Okay, so you should have two circles, a bigger one and a smaller one. The smaller one touches the line here this bigger one almost touches this line right here, okay? I can go ahead and make those a little bit darker. I don't want you to, but I will just so that you can see them a little bit better. Okay, so after we have those two circles, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually erase the parts where they overlap. Okay, and that's why I said not to draw them too dark. We're going to erase that, and then we're gonna kind of connect them with a curve right there. So kind of like that. And then erase this line. Okay, and then over here, for right now, draw lightly but we're just gonna kind of connect it like that. And then erase that line. The next thing that we're gonna put in is his ear. His ear is gonna basically go along this curve that we have on the edge, but it's gonna go out just a little bit down here. It's gonna to touch this bottom line and then go back up like that. And now we can erase all of these inner lines over here. Okay. 
you know what, let's go ahead and do this inner piece right now just while we're working on the ear. If you look at it, it's basically, it, follow, it follows this exact outline, but the top is a little bit jaggy. And then there's just a couple of spots that we leave that are gonna be white later. So I'm gonna start up here. I'm gonna go around, follow the shape of that ear until I'm up like that kind of. And then I'm just gonna make some little jags, jig jag things like that. Okay. And then I'm gonna make a couple of just long skinny ovals kind of that are gonna be white after we make the rest of it black. And just a couple of spots down here. Okay. Now we're gonna go ahead and put his smile in. I'm gonna start over here. And go down. And around like that. A little line right here. And now let's put his nose in. If you look, his nose is you know, maybe an inch or so away from the edge and it kind of lines up with the end of his smile. So we're going to put in an oval right here. I don't know if you guys can hear my cat. My cat is in the window and she wants to come out so badly. Okay, we're going to put two little circles in his nose right here. And then we're going to do his eyes. This eye is going to slant down a little bit like that, make it just a tiny bit curved. And then this one here is going to come over kind of like that. Then we're going to do one silly eyebrow up here and one silly eyebrow over off of his face entirely. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and put his little bunny ears on. Again, if you don't want to do bunny ears, you don't have to. Okay, but I'm going to put them on for our Easter beagle. Maybe we'll do this one again in the spring. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, and then his ears are just kind of oval shaped, but they come to a point. Okay, and the one on the left has an inner oval. And the one over here, it just has this one line like that. And then a second line that goes up just a little bit. Okay, now at this point, what I wanna do is erase all the lines that we don't need. Okay, right here, I have a line. I don't know if you guys can see it. Right here, I have a line that's inside of his ear that needs to go away. So I'm gonna erase that. I just want to kind of clean up these lines a little bit since I was kind of sketching. I kind of have a lot of lines. And I can also get rid of my guideline that's up at the top. I don't want to get rid of the bottom one yet. Well, no, actually I can get rid of this one. I don't want to get rid of the left to right one yet though. Okay. So now his little neck, we're gonna come over here and just draw a skinny little neck to come down like that. So make it a tiny bit wider. Feel free to adjust your drawing as you go along, okay? Don't be afraid of making a mark and it not being perfect. If it's not perfect or if you don't like it, you can go ahead and erase it and change it. That's why we use pencil when we start. Now, this little arm over here is quite, quite small. It just comes out maybe an inch or so. And he has four round fingers. And this little arm goes back. But he's holding that basket. So for right this second, I'm just going to put his thumb in. I'm going to do one right there. I'm going to leave that alone until we come back for the basket. Now his 
chest, this whole shape right here, if you look at it, it's almost like a teardrop. If you imagine a teardrop coming to a point right here, in fact, we could maybe draw it that way. Start right here between his two arms right here by his neck and make a big teardrop belly. So I'll start right here. Again, don't draw too dark, okay? I'm going to go ahead and erase these lines up here because we don't need them. Now, I don't know. He might be a little chubby in that picture. I think I'm going to leave it, but I'll let you guys decide on your own drawings if you think he needs to be modified at all. Right now is the time to do it. Okay, I'm going to give him a little leg over here. One, two little lines for a leg. And he has this big oval foot. Nice round oval. I almost feel like his leg needs to be a little bit wider. Maybe like that. And now this one over here, we're going to have two kind of curved lines. Now we want them to be the same distance apart as this leg. But these are going to be curved curved lines. And this is, I'm not sure what shape this is. Let's just start with the back first. Let's go up and make I guess it's kind of a tighter oval. And then we come down here. It'll be, just be a little bit bigger. Something like that. You know what? Now that I'm looking at it, I think that this foot needs to be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to erase just a little bit on this back end of his foot. Maybe like that. Now let's go ahead and put his basket in. So we're going to start by basically just making that handle it's a rainbow. Go ahead and make like a rainbow shape. Have it go right up to his thumb and then come down like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can really be any shape that you want. A little bit like that. And then for, our, for the basket part, I'm going to start just a little bit above our handle. I'm going to go around like that and come around to the other side and then go around the handle like that. And then we do a curved line like that, a curved line like that, and a curved line at the bottom for the bottom of the basket. I'm going to go ahead and put some eggs in it. Now if you guys want to do pumpkins, you know pumpkins are kind of um, a round ovaly shape. You could maybe put a little stem on them if you wanted. You know what, why don't I do one egg and one pumpkin so you can see what the difference would be. Okay, an egg is just a round oval. A pumpkin is gonna have a little, kind of like a little stem like that and an oval on the top of the stem. And maybe it would have some lines that come down like that. Okay, maybe it even has a little bit of a vine if you wanted to do a pumpkin. You don't have to do a pumpkin. You can just do all eggs if you want. Now on this one here, you can see I have three eggs. So I just went one, two, and then three for the eggs on that one. Right now, I'm just gonna leave this one alone. Or actually, maybe I'll put one more egg right back there. Okay, now let's go ahead and put his fingers in. We're gonna start with this finger over here. It's an oval, so we're gonna make nice oval. Now keep in mind that you want his fingers to be about the same size as the fingers on this hand. So I'm going to start with that one and then I'm going to make a second one and a third one 
and then I can make the other side of my handle for the basket, kind of like that. I know I have a lot of lines going on, but that's okay because we're going to erase them before we move on, okay? Now I want to get working on the foreground. I'm going to make this hill shape that's right here. So I'm going to start, I don't know, about right here, maybe halfway between this line or maybe two-thirds of the way up between this line and the bottom. And just kind of angle a little hill down. The exact placement really isn't that important. Then I'm going to make another hill. It's going to go like this. Now, if it's easier for you to draw through your beagle, you can go ahead and do that. I'm just going to pick up my pencil and start on, again on the other side. And, and same with this one. If it's easier for you to just draw through it so that you have a fluid line, that's fine. And then you can erase the parts here. But what I did was I just picked up my pencil and then went to the other side like that. Over here I have some trees. Those are just going to be like half circles of different sizes. Go like that. And you know what? I'm going to have it come down, I think, like right here. So this whole section is going to be trees. That'll be a hill. This will be a hill. Now I'm going to put some Easter eggs here. Again, you can put a pumpkin. I showed you guys how to do pumpkins, so if you want to do that, feel free. But I'm just going to put a couple little eggs here and a flower here. My spacing is a little bit different on this one, but that's okay. You know what? How about if I put my flower up here? And maybe I draw a stem kind of like that. And the leaf kind of like that. Just do whatever works in your space, because I'm sure that your drawing is going to be different than mine, and your sizes are going to be a little bit different. Just um, make the objects fit on the, on the space that you have. And let's go to the top. Let's do our sun. So we have a perfect circle for our sun. And then we're going to put some triangles off of it for the sun rays. Like that. And I'm going to put a little cloud over here. And another cloud over here. The bottom's going to be mostly flat. And then a lot of just kind of half circles to shape the cloud. Oh, one last detail. Actually, a couple last details. We have to put his little collar on. So let's just sketch in a simple collar and then the lines on his feet. Okay, he has four lines. And they're kind of all different lengths. Some of them are a little bit longer, some of them a little bit shorter. But they're all parallel lines, four parallel lines. And then over here we have two curved lines for toes. And I believe that that is it for this stage. So at this point, we're going to clean up our drawing. I'm going to erase my other guideline, make sure all of our guidelines are gone. Make sure your image looks the way you want it to look. You know, if you think his head is too big or too small, now's the time to fix it. If you think his belly is too big or too small, now's the time to fix it. If you're like me and you kind of have these different sketch marks that don't quite match up, now is the time that we can clean that up. Also, I have these little lines right here at the end of his stomach that go to his legs. I want to erase those. Maybe I'll clean his foot up a little. His toe's a little bit weird. Let me fix that toe. up these sketch marks on the egg and you know what I made a mess out of his handle I made just too many strokes so let me just clean that up a little bit it should basically be two parallel lines they're sort of rainbow shaped 
And then a second one. Like that. And his fingers are going to go over the inside. So I'm going to erase that little piece of handle right there. There we go. I'm going to make that a little bit rounder on the bottom. Okay, so that's our drawing. Now at this point, I'm going to put our pencil down. And I want you to get out your Sharpie. I think you guys all have one of these. If you don't have one of these, then get any old marker that you can find. As a matter of fact, you could probably use your Crayola markers if you wanted to. But I'm going to go ahead and use this. I'm probably going to stop recording just for a minute. So you guys can go ahead and pause this, but um, I just want to show you what I'm doing. I'm going to go and I'm going to take this marker and I'm going to draw over top of my pencil line. I'm going to make this nice and clean. Okay. And I want to draw over all of my pencil marks. Now, Sharpies can go through the paper. I don't think that it will on this paper because this paper is kind of thick, but you might want to ask if there's a piece of scrap paper or just a piece of regular printer paper that you can put underneath of your drawing for right now while you're doing this step. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and pause my video. So you guys go ahead and pause the TV for a minute so that you guys can catch up to me, okay? Um, but I don't want to waste the videotape and the memory and all of that. So let me pause it. And I'm going to go Sharpie over top of all my pencil marks. I want you guys to do the same thing. And then when you're all done, press play again, okay? Okay, guys. So as you can see, I went ahead and I inked in over top of my pencil lines. And I did that using my Sharpie. I, like I said, I think you guys have your Sharpies. If you don't, then just use any old black marker, but Sharpie would be the best, um, or a Micron pen if you happen to have access to a Micron pen. So I want you guys to get your big eraser out. I actually don't have my big eraser on me at the second, so I'm just gonna use this little one on my pencil, but if you guys have your big one, that would be a lot better. And I'm gonna go through, and I'm gonna erase all of the pencil marks now so that you don't see any pencil, okay? Now hold on to your paper carefully as you're doing this and don't go crazy. Don't like literally go over the entire piece of paper. Look for the pencil marks and erase them. Okay, so there we go. I've erased all of my pencil marks. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get my markers out. I need a orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and black marker. The first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color in his ear and his nose with my black marker. Now, when you're using markers, guys, there's two different ways that you can use a marker. You can use the very, very tip, or you can use the side, okay? The tip you would use for fine detail, so like right here. I'm hoping you guys can see what I'm doing. Is my hand in the way? Okay. I want to use the very, very tip in these tiny little places like this, okay? But when I get to drawing a whole big section, I might use the side of my marker to color in a bigger area, okay? Right now, I'm just going to use the tip. And the first thing that I'm going to do is outline this entire shape. And you might want to move your paper around to make it easier. You kind of want the point, this is hard for me to do on, on this and to show you, but you kind of want the point to be along the edge by where the Sharpie is all the time. So go ahead and turn your paper around to make that easier for you. I'm also going to go around these circles that we made. And again, turn your paper around. I can't do that on my easel. 
but you guys turn your paper around to give you the best angle to draw and not draw in the space that you're not supposed to. See, for me, because I'm left-handed, the left side is easier, whereas the right side is, is kind of tricky without moving my paper. If you guys, if I were you guys, I would be turning my paper upside down so that I could have better access to the side that's more difficult to reach. Okay, so basically your ear is going to look like that. And now we're going to use the side a little bit more to get these big areas in. Okay, I don't want you to just, just scribble, okay? Use the side of the marker as much as possible. If you get to a small area, then use the point again. And just go and fill in the space. Right down here, I'm gonna have to use the point. Okay, so there's his ear, and now I'm going to do his nose, and that outline first, using the tip, and outline around these little circles. And then fill in the rest of the space. Now I'm going to use the tip because I don't think there's enough space to use the side. Like that. Now I'm going to get out my yellow. I generally like to use the lighter colors first when I'm using markers. If I'm going to be in an area where I'm using other colors next to it. So let's start with our yellow because it's the lightest. Let's get our sun colored in, just the center part of our sun. Starting with the edge and then filling in using the side. And then I want to get this hill down here. So I'm going to outline the edge first. And then I'm going to go around him. first okay and now oh let's go down here too let's let's do outline by our eggs or pumpkins again if I were you guys I would be turning my paper upside down to give myself easier access to that shape without coloring inside of it but I can't turn mine upside down but if I were you that's what I would be doing okay now I want you to use the side and just go back and forth. Make sure you fill in all the white spaces, okay? I don't want any white holes in there. As you get closer to the eggs or the pumpkins, you might need to use the tip again. Fill in the space the best that you can. And then do the same thing down here. Oops. And I'm also going to do, if you're going to do Easter eggs, I'm going to make one of my Easter eggs yellow. Now I'm going to get out my, I'm going to go ahead and get out my green. Let's outline our trees that we have back here. And 
and outline the edge around around our basket. Around our little Snoopy dog. see okay yes my trees also come down over here now your trees might be shaped a little bit different than mine and that's okay just make sure that you get all of the trees filled in Now I'm going to do one green egg down here, outline it first, and color it in. Again, don't leave any white spots. And last, I'm going to do this section over here, this other little hill, and put some green right in there, and I'm going to do this hill. See, I really can't reach this very well without making my arm all twisted up. So you guys turn your paper as you need to. Now I'm not going to color in this green leaf, so I'm going to go around the green leaf. Okay, now I'm going to use my orange, and I'm going to get these rays of the sun in. And my basket. And if you chose to do pumpkins, do your pumpkins as well. Actually, you know what? If you chose to do pumpkins in your basket, maybe I would make my basket brown instead of orange. So I think I'll go ahead and do that. If you just did Easter eggs, then go ahead and make it orange like this one. Okay, but since I'm doing the pumpkin as the example, I'm going to change mine up just a little bit. So let me put that away. And I'm going to get out my purple. I'm going to put a purple egg back here. I'm going to do a purple egg down here on the bottom. Again, guys, if you want to change your colors up, that's fine. I'm going to do this purple heart flower. Again, outline it first. Okay. 
And if you chose to do his bunny ears, go ahead and do that now too. Now what I don't want you to do is the center part. Do the outer edge and the headband, but not the center part. Now I'm going to get up my blue. And if you have another Easter egg in your basket, then I would go ahead and make that one blue. I'm going to make this one down here blue. Do my edge, my outlining. And then using the side to fill in the big space. Almost finished with our markers anyway. Let me get, let's see, where is my brown marker? Okay. I had to find my brown marker. I wasn't planning to use it initially. I'm going to do the stem of my pumpkin in the brown. And if you chose to do a whole pumpkin full, of, or I mean a whole basket full of orange pumpkins, then I would make your basket brown instead of orange like I did on the other sample with the Easter eggs. I like the orange for the Easter eggs. I think it's bright and cheery. But I think if you have a whole basket full of pumpkins, then an orange basket is too much. So let's do the entire basket and our handle. The handle definitely use the tip, especially when you get close to his fingers, because you don't want to accidentally color his fingers in. Okay, so that is it for our markers. Now our very last step is going to be to get your, your, let me see, your soft pastels or chalk pastels out. If you haven't used these yet, you'll probably have to unwrap the three trays with the shrink wrap. So you can pause this if you need to and go ahead and do that. I'm going to use this color right here. You don't have to use that one, but I like it because it's a little bit, it's yellow, but it's not too bright like these and it's not too orangey it's just kind of in the middle it's nice and soft so I'm going to use this color to do my background which I think this isn't quite the same one that I used before but that's okay you could also go a shade lighter if you wanted to I'm going to sort of outline around my objects using either a corner or the sharp, you know, this either the corner or this edge right here to go around the objects to outline them. But when you're done outlining, then we can use the flat edge, almost like we did with the oil pastels before, to fill in a big space. And the reason why I wanted to use the chalk pastels on this was I thought it just gave it a softer kind of friendlier, warmer touch. The markers are kind of cold and flat, and they certainly have, you know, a purpose. But I thought that this would just kind of warm it up a little bit and make it a little bit funner. So I'm gonna go around my whole sky. You know, if you get a little bit in your other objects, it's not a crisis. I try not to, but okay.
And notice that I'm leaving white space with my chalk pastel. I'm not going real hard. I'm not like grinding it in. Okay. So I want it to just look kind of open and airy. Careful not to get in your cloud over here. should have made those horizontal. Their sky we tend to work in horizontal. I just wasn't quite paying attention there. Okay, and then we're gonna do inside of our basket. Be careful not to get his little fingers. And then all of these little spaces here. Okay, now I like it just like that. If you want to, you could blend it in a little bit. Um, you don't have to. It's totally up to you. You guys do. Now, something that I want to do is down here. I still want to use my, my um, chalk pastels. Actually, I think I'm going to go a little bit more orange. I'm not sure if this is the same color I used before or not. But I want to give just a little bit of detail down here in this yellow patch of grass in this yellow field and very lightly I just kind of want to go like this and add maybe like a shadow behind Snoopy kind of under his feet a little bit just to give a little bit of depth there and I also thought it would be fun to just put a tiny little bit in the sunshine just to give that a little bit of dimension, maybe on our Easter egg. Okay. Oops, I just realized something that I forgot with my yellow. I wanted to do some highlights on my trees. So I'm going to pick my yellow back up. Just real lightly. I'm just real lightly kind of going over top of the trees. I'm just smudging a little bit of highlight in. Maybe a little bit in this grass here. Maybe even a little bit on this Easter egg over here. Okay, the next one that I want to get is purple. I'm going to use a light purple and go inside of his little ears here. And you can also put like a little bit of highlight on the other shades of purple that we did with our marker. Last but not least, I want to get a tiny bit of blue. Wait. Well, okay. Let me get a little bit of blue. Put some highlights on this Easter egg. And I want to put just a little bit of dimension in his ears and like on his body. Normally he's just black and white, but since our image is so colorful, I wanted to add just a tiny bit of color to him. So this can be like just a little bit of a shadow like under his arms, maybe like on his backside there, or under his belly, maybe on the bottoms of his feet. He's got just a little bit of a shadow. Not much, don't overdo it, but just a little bit, just to give him a little bit of three-dimensionality. And then we're gonna put a little bit in our clouds. You can use a different color blue if you want. Just kind of make little circle shapes or half circles for the clouds. And now I'm going to find a light green. A light green. And color in this last little leaf here. 
so that it stands out. Okay, and I think that that is it. If you want to play around with the pastels a little bit more, you could throw some more color in here and there. But I think that's about it. So I hope that you guys like this project. Let me see if I can get my little face in here. I hope that you guys like this project. Um, I think it was kind of fun. I know it's out of season, but you know what? This has been a crazy year, so why not? So anyway, I hope you guys had fun, and I will see you guys next week. Make sure that you send me your pictures so I can see how you guys did. I'm looking forward to seeing them, okay? Okay, bye.